Hello fellow creators, welcome to this new video. Throughout the course of this series, we'll learn about building a full stack Swellkit app with Houdini, which is a new and magically disappearing fully featured GraphQL client. And we'll learn about both Houdini and Swellkit a bit while building this interface to an e-commerce solution where we have a featured page with product listing, with complete pagination, and a product detail page and we learn about all the great things Houdini has to offer around querying a GraphQL based data layer. So there are three key technologies we'll be using in this video. First, it would be Swellkit as our full stack framework because Swellkit leads to blazingly fast websites and server and web applications with its uh, unique take on, you know, serving SPAS, MPAS, SSR as well as SSG based applications, right? It's very easy to get started with uh, and thus we'll be relying upon this. Then we'll be using something called a mock shop offered by Shopify, which is kind of a compatible with the APIs and works as a good mock server for kind of mocking and using GraphQL based services to retrieve say products from our e-commerce portal, which closely models how Shopify APIs work. And then the star of the show today is Houdini. This is our preferred uh, GraphQL client today and would we'll see what sort of interesting thing Houdini does for you to make you more productive as a GraphQL based you know, full stack uh, developer. So what Houdini is, Houdini is a fully featured GraphQL client that seamlessly integrates with the framework of your choice, right? Today it sits with the support of Swellkit, but as you can see, there is a one plan for next, another one plan for solid start, and then there's another one plan for next. And again, it's following something called an adapter model where, you know, there is a core engine and then there are adapters for different frameworks. How Houdini differs is Houdini lets you write queries and then Houdini just take control of generating the rest, right? It's fully automatic, totally customizable, declarative, composable, and type safe. The power of Houdini is in simplifying the amount of probably repetitive work you are required to do when working with a GraphQL based service. In this session, we'll see how Houdini drastically reduces the amount of boilerplate code you write to work with GraphQL based services. Since we're combining Houdini with Swellkit, you can be totally sure that the amount of code you write to interact with services, render results, show dynamic pages would be minimum. So let's go ahead and explore how Swellkit could be combined with Houdini and how we can create highly dynamic GraphQL based full stack applications with Swellkit and Houdini. So first thing first, let's go ahead and install Swellkit. Go in your terminal and type create salt at the latest. And there just kind of type a dot and then initialize the project. Where should we create your project directory? Leave blank to use the current directory. We want to use the current directory. So just enter this. Here, out of the available options, choose a skeleton project since we want to start from the very beginning. We want to use JavaScript with JSDoc comments or we want to use TypeScript. We'll choose TypeScript. Do you want to ESLint support? Yeah, we do want ESLint support. Do we need Prettier? Yeah, let's go ahead and have Prettier too. Any automated testing or something? No. VTest based testing? No. Right. So the project is initialized now. We'll just do a npm install. Now let's go ahead and run the application. The application is now available on localhost 5173. Let's just open it. Localhost 5173. So, yep, it's available there. Exit this for now. Clear this. Very next thing we'll do is we'll install Tailwind CSS. Type npx. Swelt. We are using something called Swelt Adder, which makes it really effortless to integrate something like Tailwind CSS or other integrations, right? So, go ahead. Type npx, swelt add, use the latest package, and there just provide Tailwind CSS. So it did several things for us. It set up post CSS and then it set up Tailwind CSS for us, right? We can just open the project and see what it made available to us, 
right? So here, if we explore our package.json file, we have all of the dependencies installed. We have ESLIN, Prettier, Swalt, Swalt check, Post CSS, Kelvin CSS, and everything installed, right? Now just go back to your terminal, type npm run dev. The server is up and running on localhost 5173. Reload this. Kelvin CSS is applied now. We see that now it's somehow sanely optimized for visuals. Come back and review the project structure. So we have a source directory. Inside source directory, we have roots folder. Within the roots folder, we have one default page.swelt, which is kind of serving this particular page. Welcome to Houdini kit. Save this. It's working for us. So there's a layout file which is referring to post CSS and post CSS is basically configuring our Tailwind CSS. So that's all to it. Now we have the full stack framework ready with our Tailwind CSS configuration. Now we can go ahead and start Houdini. Go back to a terminal, type npm, install Houdini as a dev dependency. So once Houdini is installed, there will be several things will be required to do to make Houdini work with SwirlKit nicely, right? But all of those steps are actually uh, kind of automated by Houdini for you. What we can actually do instead of looking into the docs and figuring out what sort of configurations to apply to make Houdini work with SwirlKit, we can instead do something like npx Houdini in it. Go ahead, type this and hit enter. It's asking, will you use a remote GraphQL API? So yeah, in this application, we do want to consume a remote GraphQL API, which is served by MockShop, right? Now MockShop is our GraphQL API server at this point, And MockShop's API is available at MockShop API, right? So we'll just type yes over here and here we'll just say https mock shop api as the endpoint and then hit enter so this step took care of several things for us now let's just review our project structure and see what got added open your code base in the code base the very first thing you'd notice is you have something called Houdini config.js file. The Houdini config.js file is the key configuration file that Houdini uses to know about the API that is used to consume the data. Plus, it's the main file to configure anything related to Houdini related plugins, right? As we noticed in Houdini's docs, it ships with support for SwirlKit, but you know, similar support is planned for other frameworks also. And there are more plugins to it. Right, there's a, a lot of plugins that Houdini offers, right? So all of those plugins can be actually configured using this plugins declaration. Also plugins basically extend the functionality of Houdini. They take the Houdini core and make it, you know, useful to multiple frameworks, to multiple use cases and stuff. And so this config file is the central place you'd use to kind of uh, configure the endpoint that you use to consume the data in your application or multiple Houdini plugins, right? What else it added for us? It added something called a client TS file. So if you worked with Apollo, you know that, you know, consuming any GraphQL service requires a client, right? So Houdini has its own client, which is auto-generated and configured for you through this Houdini client construct, right? To start with, the very basic thing it needs is the endpoint that, you know, serves the GraphQL data or the GraphQL response, right? So the config option that we provided in the CLI is now used to point to the base URL of our GraphQL server, right? Plus the same endpoint is used by Houdini config.js file 
to keep a watch on the schema changes, right? Besides the Houdini config.js file and client.ts file, there's more that got added as a part of this initialization process. It added something called a GraphQL RCML file, which tells about the schema sources. The first schema source is schema.graphql file. We'll just review the structure in a few moments. And then there's something called Houdini GraphQL schema.graphql file, which is a location in the directory auto generated by Houdini. As far as documents are concerned, documents are basically uh, GraphQL documents which will contain your queries. It says that the documents could be inferred from files that end with .gql file inside our source directory or files that end with .swelt extension inside our source directory or files that are available inside the Houdini auto-generated directory and they are inside GraphQL documents.gql file. So this is for our GraphQL server, right? Besides all of this, you get a few things more, right? If you look at the config now, there is Houdini already integrated for you. Since it's sort of a compiler, right? It's a magically disappearing GraphQL framework. It means that all of its magic is available at the compile time. And that's why you have the Houdini already imported here and added before SWORDKit. Before your application is actually run, Houdini needs to do its magic, right? That's why Houdini is always required to be placed before SWORDKit, right? What, what else it added for us, right? Go inside your packages on file. And there you'd see it added something called Houdini Swelt, right? So besides the core Houdini, you have Houdini Swelt also added for your framework. Since we agreed to using a remote GraphQL API, plus we provided the remote endpoint URL, Houdini was able to actually use this particular URL to create a schema.graphql file for us. So all of the declarations and query and mutation because we provided the remote URL as well as agree that we need to use a remote URL, Houdini was able to pull the static schema definition for us from that remote URL and place right inside our project's directory, right? So now this single file contain all of the schema definition for our mock shop API, right? So these were like four to five, you know, big steps. If you would configure this manually, it would be a lot to configure, right? Something like, you know, you'll have to go inside your weed config JS file, then you'll have to add Houdini, then you'll have to create Houdini config.js file, where you'll have to tell about the URL that serves the GraphQL data, you'll have to configure the plugins, you'll have to install the plugins, you'll have to create the client file, which can be used by your program or application to call the APIs and all. Right, so all of this is now automated for you and you can just invoke npx Houdini in it from your terminal and you'll have all of this auto done for you, right? So our SwellKit project is now configured with Tailwind CSS, it's now configured with Houdini as the GraphQL client, it's also configured with the MockShop API, right? So now let's get started with the interesting stuff. So in this video, you learn about setting up Houdini with a new SwellKit project. You learn about the project structure you get created when uh, you initialize a Houdini project. And you learn about the different files that Houdini auto-generates for you when you initialize a new SwellKit project with our Houdini client. In the next video, you learn about how to make a query with the Houdini client. See you in my next video. Bye-bye.